Hull KR are leading a revolt amongst rugby league clubs against the signing of Israel Folau by Catalan Dragons. The former union star was sacked by Rugby Australia for his homophobic comments and Hull KR have written to Dragons warning them that they will take proceedings, legal proceedings, if they suffer financial losses as a result of his being signed, such as sponsorship withdrawal or lack of investment. And I can tell you there is a, a Super League board meeting this morning in the next hour and a half or so just up the road from where we are right now and this is one of the things they will be talking about even though we've seen Hull KR lead the way here we do know that many other Super League clubs agree with what they're saying and they will be talking about this morning. Israel Folau hasn't played yet, he's trained and I guess the crunch will come as if he plays yeah. and the fans don't want to watch him. Well, thank you. One to watch that one, isn't it? Mm. Israel Folau, the Super League season is less than a week old and already there have been several headlines on and off the pitch, mainly involving Folau. You might recall he's the Australian rugby player who last year was sacked by Rugby Australia for homophobic comments. Well, he's been given another chance in Rugby League after joining the Catalan Dragons for the 2020 Super League season. Not universally popular, though. There are concerns from other clubs that reputational damage could be done to the league and they've threatened legal action if they lose revenue as a result. Club officials met in Salford today to discuss the Falau situation. Super League had no power to veto Falau's arrival, but after today's meeting, they voted to have more influence to prevent controversial signings in the future. We'll get more from our correspondent Dave Woods and journalist Steve Brady in France shortly. But first, here's Super League Chief Executive Robert Elston. Super League has, a cl has clearly and consistently outlined its position on Israel Folau. With the season underway, we now feel it's important for Super League to separate what is an off-the-field matter from what is happening on the pitch. Super League board accepts fully the legalities around the RFL's decision to register Folau, and the, bo the board has voted unanimously to put in place measures that ensure Super League has greater authority to stop controversial signings such as this in the future. As a sport, we have an impressive and enviable track record when it comes to equality, diversity and inclusion, and we will continue our great work in those areas. Well, our rugby league correspondent Dave Woods was at Salford Stadium today, he joins us on Sports Day now. Dave, what does this all mean? Well, I think today was a reflection of um, how disappointed the, the game as a whole is that Catalan Dragons have gone ahead and signed Israel Folau against the wishes of the RFL, of the Super League themselves, and of most clubs as well, but it's also a, re a reflection that they can do very little about it now. Um, they, the Catalan Dragons outlined today, Bernard Guache, their owner, wasn't there, but representatives outlined why they'd made the signing and what they expected. Um, and the clubs obviously, again, told them that they weren't happy that this had happened. They, they are looking at ways of, as we heard there from Robert Elston, of somehow legally framing a way of stopping these so-called controversial signings happening again. Um, whether they can find that legal framework remains to be seen. The RFL are currently the, uh, the body that decides whether a player can be registered or not. The Super League want more of that power. And is that a case of preventing Israel Folau signing a second year of contracts at Catalan? Currently, he's on a 12-month deal. I was going to say, how do they stop this happening in the future? Is it down to the clubs? Is it down to Super League? And presumably, there's some kind of law involved in this as well in well, terms of where people can work? It's very difficult to see how they can if a club is hell-bent on signing a player. Um, we are led to believe that last May all 12 Super League clubs got together and Israel Folau was discussed and at that point all 12 said no, we don't want to sign him. But Catalan have also obviously gone unilaterally away from that decided that they do want to sign him, uh, perhaps not realising what kind of furore was going to be created as a result of that. Uh, and it's a difficult without having all the clubs agreeing how they can prevent it. You know, is a club going to club come to the rest of the clubs and say, we want to sign this player, and other clubs might say, well, you can't sign that player because actually it makes you a better team, and that's to our disadvantage. So it's, it's mired in a lot, of, a lot of confusion. Well, Dave, stay with us, uh, because you mentioned the furore there in England. Well, actually, in France, it's a little bit different uh, because we can get the view from France. They've had a week to digest Falao's arrival in Perpignan. Journalist Steve Brady is based out there and covers the Dragons. He told me earlier the reaction has been very different to the UK. To be truthful, it hasn't had the impact over here with the general public that it has had back in the UK or back in Australia. I think they're a little more pragmatic over here, maybe about the issue, maybe not as obsessed with social media. 
Uh, and I, I don't think it's had the same impact as back home in the UK. Falau himself has declined an interview with the BBC, but he's spoken to the club today, he says that he's grateful for the opportunity afforded to him by the Dragons. Do you think he or the team will be affected by all of the events and the commotion that's been surrounding his signing? Uh, I don't think there's an issue at all between certainly between the players. They just I spoke to a couple of wingers are looking forward to saying, please get him on my inside centre. I'm going to score a lot of tries. So I really don't see any animosity between players. No division whatsoever. And I think if you talk about inclusivity, they're going to include him in the club. And uh, we have quite a few uh, Oceani players down here anyway from uh, Fiji and Tonga and Samoa. And they're of similar kind of backgrounds. And I really don't see any division or any problem with, with Israel slotting into the team. Uh, I booked into him myself. He seems a very pleasant, a very uh, mild mannered kind of guy. Uh, and if he just concentrates on playing the rugby league, I'm sure he'll do very well here. All of this has come before he's even stepped foot on the pitch for Catalans. Could potentially make his debut this weekend. How do you think he will fare on the pitch for them? My own personal opinion, they'll slot into t the team perfectly. He looks super fit. I've seen him. Uh, he's been running around the ground. Uh, he's, he's a big unit. He's kept himself fit, obviously. You can see a mile off. And he's just very keen to play. He just wants to play. Um, we've been told not to ask certain questions. The club's promised that should uh, Israel speak controversially, like it has in the past, then there'll be an immediate termination of his contract. So I don't think we'll be hearing any more uh, outspoken views on uh, homosexuality or, or religion. I think what we're going to see is a very uh, strong and talented player who's got a one-year contract at this club and he's, he's going to try and prove himself. I have a feeling he's going to hit this season running and try to redeem himself back home uh, in his homeland of Australia. That's Steve Brady speaking to me a little bit earlier. Our correspondent Dave Woods is still here. Do we expect to see him make his debut this weekend? Will it be a challenge for him to, to come to Wakefield? We're told by uh, Alex Chan, the director of rugby at, at Catalan, and Neil Wood, who's the representative of the Catalans over here in England, that he will not be playing uh, this weekend. He's only arrived in Perpignan in the last week or so. He's got to go through various fitness tests. Uh, I'd be very surprised if he plays against Wakefield this weekend. I think he's more likely to make his debut at home in Perpignan, where I suspect he'll get a bit more of a, a more comfortable reaction than he would mm. if his first game was over here. And he's only got a one-year contract, mm. so what does the future hold for Falau and some of the discussions that have been happening in that meeting today? I guess a lot of that is down to him. If he repeats some of the things he's mentioned on social media in the past, then I suspect it'll be a very brief career in rugby league with Catalan because of the, uh, the penalties that are already laid down in the contract for him and the club. If he doesn't repeat any of that, um, then who knows? He might extend further in Super League, he might return to rugby union. It's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few months. Uh, Dave Woods, our rugby league correspondent, thanks for joining us on Sports Day.